So the state of New Jersey's new concealed carry law, which defied the Supreme Court's Bruin decision, was just struck down. So let's talk about this. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing the state of New Jersey's new concealed carry law, which was just halted by a federal court judge. The case we will be discussing in this video is called Coons v. Reynolds. In this case, a temporary restraining order was just granted by the court, and the result of the TRO is that various aspects of the New Jersey concealed carry law is now blocked as unconstitutional. This case results from New Jersey passing a bill called A4769. This bill was introduced in direct response to the Supreme Court's recent ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. The legislation requires gun owners who want a permit in New Jersey to purchase liability insurance, and also it requires a longer training course for you to get that permit. And then it also has a catch-all provision within it where essentially you cannot concealed carry on any private property at any business unless the property owner affirmatively tells you that yes, you can concealed carry at that property, or they put up a sign that says that concealed carry is okay at that location. If this sounds familiar, that's because it is. The state of New Jersey essentially copied the New York State Concealed Carry Improvement Act, that law which was currently uh, under review right now by the Supreme Court in another case called the Antioch case. This law in the state of New Jersey is the focus of a case and a challenge in that case, Coons v. Reynolds. In the lawsuit, the plaintiff sought a temporary restraining order to halt the enforcement of this law because it indeed violates the Second Amendment and also the Supreme Court's ruling in Bruin. Well, we recently received an order from the judge in that case, Renee Bum, and she in fact granted the TRO in favor of the plaintiffs, which halts this law in the state of New Jersey. In the order, the judge made some very amazing statements, so I want to read some of these to you. First, she stated, Defendants pressed this court to refrain from acting urgently and to afford them more time to set forth the legal justifications for this legislation. The state of New Jersey argues a hasty injunction would short-circuit the democratic process while the litigation process is underway. This court concurs in that no injunction should ever be hastily issued. But defendants, the state of New Jersey, must do more than promise that they will justify the constitutional basis of this legislation later. Surely defendants had or should have had the historical materials and analysis the state relied upon when it began its legislative response to Bruin. After all, the Supreme Court was clear that in order for a gun control legislation to pass constitutional muster under the Second Amendment, such legislation must be consistent with historical tradition. The state has had six months since Bruin to identify well-established and representative historical analogs. She goes on to state that certainly, defendants anticipated challenges to the legislation and should have been better prepared to defend the legislation's constitutionality. So here the judge in the case is outright denying the state of New Jersey's arguments that they will in fact present some sort of historical support for this law, but that the state needs more time. Here the judge says, no, Bruin was very clear. You must have historical support for these restrictions and the state of New Jersey should have had that evidence and should have it present prior to even passing this law. They don't get more time to try to scratch up some sort of evidence once they are eventually sued. Then the judge walks through the sensitive location restrictions under this law in the state of New Jersey. She finds the public libraries and museums restriction to in fact be unconstitutional because the state claims it has authority to regulate government-owned properties, but as the judge stated in this case, the restrictions also impact non-government property. And the state provided no evidence for why these types of non-government properties should be restricted as well and why this restriction is valid. Then she addresses the ban on concealed carry at any place that serves alcohol, including bars and restaurants. The only evidence that the state of New Jersey put forward for this ban was an 1867 Kansas statute that prohibited possession of firearms by intoxicated people. However, that is not what this New Jersey law actually does. Instead, it bans concealed carry at any location if they in fact just serve alcohol. Based on that, she strikes down this portion of the law that has a restriction on concealed carry at any location that serves alcohol. Then she also strikes down the restriction on concealed carry in places that are essentially of entertainment. Any entertainment location could also be a sensitive place under this law. 
However, the main portion of this order that I want to focus on is her striking down the catch-all carry ban in the state of New Jersey. This is the aspect where essentially the state of New Jersey and states like New York are saying that a private property, a business, will have to affirmatively tell someone that they can concealed carry at that location or put up some sort of sign that says, yes, concealed carry is okay. In this order, the judge states, plaintiffs contend that this provision establishes an anti-carry presumption and therefore establishes an unconstitutional default ban on the carry of firearms for self-defense. In other words, the state of New Jersey is flipping the constitutional presumption that a permitted gun owner can carry for self-defense in public by declaring that all private property, which is the vast majority of property in the state, is now off limits unless a property owner affirmatively consents or posts a guns allowed sign. Defendants disagree, arguing that while there has always been a presumption that one has a right to carry on public property, no such presumption exists with respect to private property because a property owner has always had the right to be king of his own castle. However, she goes on to say that that argument by the state of New Jersey is pretty much comparing apples to oranges. Yes, it's always been the case that a private property owner can exclude someone from their property. That is not disputed at all, even by the plaintiffs here in this case. But that doesn't mean that the right of the people to keep and bear arms was presumed only to be appropriate when dealing with public property. To say that would be to say that the right to keep and bear arms is excluded to only public carry and public property. She states that the defendants seem to turn a private property owner's lack of consent and or right to exclude into a general proposition that the Second Amendment does not presume the right to bear arms on private property. Nothing in the text of the Second Amendment draws that distinction, she states. Nor can this court find such distinction made by the court in Heller or Bruin. She then goes on to explain how the state here is significantly downplaying the impact that this portion of the law actually has. It forces concealed carry holders to ask or know beforehand if they can in fact carry at the private property. And this tactic by the state flips the paradigm on its head. Private property owners have always been able to deny access to people, but to then say you as a law abiding person have to ask permission or have the owner give you permission every single time is not what the law historically has required. And what this does is it restrains the second amendment to only a right to carry on public property. However, that's not historically correct. And based on that, she halts this catch all provision in the law. But if the TRO is any indication and her language here in granting the TRO is in of any indication, it is likely that she will also grant the request for a preliminary injunction. So this is another major win. You have a federal court judge in the state of New Jersey, a different state we've seen in New York already, striking down a concealed carry law that was passed in direct defiance to the Supreme Court's recent ruling in Bruin. So if I get any more information, I will let you all know. I also wanna mention two things for the channel. First, of course, the Gundy's Awards is currently open. So if you would like to vote for me, I am one of the categories for the top two a voice. You can use one of the links down below in the detail section or the comment section. We won last year, actually we won. I finally got the award in the mail. This is the Gundy's Award last year for the top two-way voices. So I'd love to win again this year. And the other thing that I wanna update you guys on is I have in fact released the first episode of the podcast. I will leave links down below as well. It's also over on my second YouTube channel and available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, uh, Amazon Music, and other places as well. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.